All right, we're running. It's fine. Yeah, it's uh, there. Bear dog seasons that are going on at the same time as the as the deer hunts. If they're not moved to a different date, um, not that particular hunt, but other hunts. That, as same, you can see in slides, the slide later on that shows all the at hunts. the same time. At the same time. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm sir. sorry. Yeah. I was just looking at this one. Thank you, Chris. Are we ready? Another issue we'd like to talk about, which recently came up uh, within this past month, is uh, additional bear hunting opportunities in Tennessee. Um, as I explained a little bit earlier, most of our bears are found within the Unaka Mountains. This is what we call our traditional bear hunting counties. Uh, however, we, we do have a growing population of bears up on the Cumberland Plateau. And there is much discussion within the agency and uh, within a number of uh, folks that would like to see uh, new opportunities arise in the state of Tennessee, bear hunting opportunities. And what we did, we did not recommend a hunt on the Cumberland Plateau this year. Uh, Dan Gibbs is our uh, Region 4 big game biologist, and he spearheaded a DNA study this past year looking at how many bears are up on the plateau. It was the first year of the study. We have a piece of information, but it's just one piece. But looking at that information, we, we do know that we do have a considerable number of bears up on that plateau. And a comment was made, uh, probably erroneously, to say no one, we didn't receive any public input uh, regarding hunting bears on the plateau. And lo and behold, there was someone that submitted a recommendation to have a bear hunt up there. And uh, he watched the commission meeting and he was, he was concerned that his recommendation wasn't looked at. And we went through all of the recommendations and unfortunately we could not find where he submitted it. And we firmly believe he submitted it. We looked at the, the information that he supplied. And what we believe happened, one of, one of two things happened. Uh, that recommendation either got caught in a spam filter or there was human error because those recommendations get passed down from um, division to division until they get put in the appropriate folder. Uh, we're going to correct that. We spoke with Mike May as well as some of the folks in IT on figuring out a better system so fewer people handle those recommendations and so they go directly to the, the appropriate division immediately. And so there apparently was a recommendation from the public to have a bear hunt on the plateau. And so once, once that was made known and we presented this information um, at the April staff meeting or April commission meeting, we then open it up for public comments. And as you can imagine, we got lots of public comments and a number of them were requesting a bear hunt on the Cumberland Plateau. Uh, we received 68 individual letters. Uh, 38 of them were in reference to expanding the, the opportunities and hopefully having a bear hunt on the plateau. Uh, we also did receive a petition that was signed by 247 individuals also requesting a hunt up there. So there appears to be a, a, a fair amount of people up in that area that would be highly supportive of new bear hunting opportunities. However, having said that, when we're looking at those, those five counties, again, we only have one piece of data as far as what the bear population looks like. Um, and so we're still struggling to figure out where those bears are located. Uh, if you recall Dan's presentation, that study took place primarily on the Big South Fork. Of the 100 um, sites that were selected or there's more than 100 sites, 70% uh, of all the sites that were selected were on the Big South Fork Park, and 30% uh, were on private land sur immediately surrounding the park. And so we still do not have a lot of information about where those bears are scattered throughout the plateau. And that gives us a little concern about recommending bear hunts in counties where we're not really sure how many bears we have. And so Another thing that we thought about, because when, once we received these public comments, especially the, the number of public comments we were, uh, that came into the office, we, we took it under serious consideration on whether or not this was going to become a recommendation from the agency. And uh, one of the things that concerned us is because of the short time period, we, in fact, we were still receiving comments all the way up until this past Monday. And so to turn around and propose a hunt up there there are multiple partners. Uh, besides the Big South Fork Park, there, there's numerous state agencies that own and operate public land up there. Uh, 
we would very much like to approach those agencies and begin working out a plan on how we intend to hunt these. And more than likely, we, we understand that we're going to introduce these, these hunting opportunities, but we, we very much want to proceed cautiously. And our, our recommendation is, is not to, um, we, we want to create this bear plan, which we've, we've gotten a lot of work done so far, but we want to recommend how we start proposing and phasing in these hunting seasons. Obviously, which fl with fledgling populations, we want to proceed cautiously. And certain forms of, of hunting are much lower impact than others. And what we'd like to do is create um, this strategy in our bear plan, which will be done by, by this time next year, in which you can see firsthand how bear hunting on that area would be phased in and in what steps we would take. And so at this time, we st although we, we do acknowledge many, many people up on the plateau wanting to have a bear hunt, uh, the agency at this point in time is still not recommending that we do it this year. Forgive my thick headedness, but basically what I'm hearing is is that um, generally speaking and from a biological standpoint, the agency agrees that the opportunity to hunt bears is available, but you want to develop a plan which is going to include uh, federal and state entities and other user groups. And you want there to be a comprehensive plan before this is implemented. But by this time next year, yes. you anticipate you'll be bringing a plan to us. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Darrell, I, I appreciate all you're doing. Uh, I live up there, and I've heard from a lot of these people, and, and, and they really want to hunt. But I understand that we need to know more about the resources. But as long as we're developing a plan and working towards a goal, I mean, I know we want to be kind of low impact when we first start out, but eventually we'd like to build up to, you know, where they could on a weekend or something run a dog in a few years or something. Absolutely. And one of our biggest concerns, because we know where that study was focused, was on the Big South Fork, which we're probably not going to be able to hunt in that area. And so we know there's a lot of bears, and that, that more or less is serving as a bear reserve. The reason we have so many bears throughout the eastern portion of the state is because of the number of bear reserves we have, which continuously pump bears into the surrounding counties. The unfortunate thing up on the plateau is we don't know how many bears are immediately off that area. We, we do know there's bears. We get comments and calls about bears. Um, but the thing that concerns us is if we open up all the counties outside that area and we introduce a bear hunting up there and it's very effective, and we miss, we, we guess wrong how many bears are surrounding that area, we can knock it back so far that we might not be entertaining the idea of a bear hunt for another five years until they repopulate that area. And so I think it'd be best if we get um, some more, uh, whether or not we, we start the, the bait station surveys across the entire plateaus, just so we can document the range of the bears on the plateau. Uh, I think we'd be in much better position to introduce hunts more slowly and make sure they're there every year instead of introducing prematurely and then have to wait five years to, for that bear population to come back. Are we issuing any depredation permits up there right now? Do you want to comment, comment on that? Yes, we are. Daryl, this is very helpful, and you have confidence that within this six month to a year period that you will be able to have the data that you need. I, I yeah. guess I'm, I'm, well, I, I want to make sure that if we're making a decision well, to pause based on a year's time that, that you've the, got the, data, the ability it, I, to I get will, the information and feel confident that you'll be able to give us a recommendation. Yes, I'm confident we'll be able to give you a recommendation. It's not so much the data that's really holding us up. But us proposing a hunt, we have the opportunity to really upset a lot of our partners. Uh, the way it works over in, in uh, eastern Tennessee with the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, we, we have a memor memorandum of understanding on how we're going to manage bears. So we manage very closely with the, sm with the Smokies, and we have a good understanding working relationship with their folks helping us and, and our folks helping them. We're still trying to develop that memorandum of understanding with the Big South Fork and some of those other um, entities to make sure we have a good management plan up up on the Cumberland Plateau 
and if we make a move without consulting any of them or having those agreements in place, we don't want to set anything backwards. And so the primary thing right now, which, which we're really believing that the, this year time period, we, we could figure out the rest of our management plan and get those partnerships in place. So when we recommend a hunt next year, we could recommend a hunt that would be low impact. So um, we just want to make sure that our partners are on board with it. Thank you. I think it's interesting that how long ago was it y'all did the presentation that just to inform us that bears were moving west and it was just last I believe it was last year it we last we conducted year, we conducted a survey knowing that bears were moving more westerly and we were finding them more and more on a plateau well, I think I think y'all are in a, the agency's doing the right thing but being cautious about how quick we're going to have a bear hunt and I'd personally like to see that we're confident that the population would would support all manners and means of hunting and not just maybe archery or something. I'd like to see all of it before we get too aggressive with it because I think, you know, being from East Tennessee, bear hunts traditionally dog and I want to see that involved too, so. One of the most interesting pieces of information that came out of that survey from, from last year, which Responsive Management conducted for us, uh, we surveyed folks all across the state of Tennessee asking them, how they perceive bears and whether or not they want bears in their area. And it shocked us because we felt the residents in non-bear areas really wouldn't have favorable impression of having bears move in. But it is incredible support. I believe it is up over 80% of the folks wanted bears in their counties. And so the, the fact that not just the hunters of Tennessee want to see bears expand, but just the citizens of Tennessee want to see bears expand, I would hate for us to really um, take a negative step backwards by doing anything premature. I have a quick question. The, 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 the partnerships with the, the people that own the, the, the other public partners mm -hmm. up there, you're primarily talking about dog hunting because the dogs range so widely, correct? Well, it includes, um, and Steve, if you, the, the, the state, okay, the, the Department of Forestry owns Pickett State Forest. Um, we don't even know if they want still hunting of bears. Or we haven't even approached them yet because we've only been discussing this after receiving all these comments and that we were considering it within the last few days. So we haven't even entered discussions to see if they would be in favor or in opposition of a, of a bear hunt. Obviously, we believe they would be in favor of it, but we, we, we haven't even approached them yet to see what their, their stance is on this, this subject. Any more questions from the commission? Anyone from the audience have a question? The last section of the Big Game Proclamation deals with wild turkeys, and I'm just going to throw a few quick graphs up to show you what condition the wild turkey flock is in Tennessee. If you look at the information regarding the spring harvest, you can see where we, we've peaked tremendously. And we're start, starting to level off. We're still at incredibly high numbers. I believe this was the third highest harvest that we've experienced in Tennessee this, this past springtime. If you look at the fall harvest in Tennessee, it's up and down. Oftentimes, this is dictated by opportunity. We, we change these bag limits uh, back and forth considerably because we manage by county. As you can see from that graph, the top line is the overall harvest, that orange line immediately underneath it is the region two harvest. So region two is where most of the fall hunting occurs. And as you can see, that's more or less stable, just bouncing along uh, as is. Much lower, if you look at the, the Y axes, as far as number of birds harvested, the fall harvest usually constitutes less than 10% of the entire turkey harvest throughout the year. However, when you combine those two, the spring and fall, we do have our annual harvest. And you can see that our Tennessee uh, turkey flock is in is in good shape. We believe it'll be leveling off. You you, you cannot continue to increase uh, infinitely, and so we should be leveling off and oscillating from here on out. Uh, but these turkey numbers, uh, in comparison to other states, are incredibly well. A number of states have experienced this turkey decline. Tennessee appears to be holding its own. However, we do have some counties that we're watching closely because we do see some signs where there may be some problems coming up, and I'll mention that in just a second. In fact, I'll mention it now. One of the recommendations we have for the turkey seasons in our big game proclamation uh, is adjusting the, the limits 
for the fall hunting opportunities. Uh, obviously, Carol, Megs, Ray, Roan, um, Weekly, we increase the opportunities. But if you notice here, there's, there's four counties where we're actually pulling back our regulations. Uh, Giles, Lawrence, Lincoln, and Wayne County. Uh, specifically, Giles, Lawrence, and Wayne County. Uh, it's an area of those counties just south of I-64, or um, Highway 64, that we are getting more and more comments from the public that something is going on with their turkey population. And so recently, uh, Representative Barry Doss uh, helped coordinate a meeting with our agency and the hunter, hunters of those three counties. And I, I must credit Richard Kirk, who's our Region 2 Wildlife Manager. Here's, he speak he spearheaded that meeting Tuesday night down in Lawrence County in Loretto and uh, did a fantastic job presenting the information to those hunters, working with them, developing a plan in which we can collect more information to hopefully address any issues that are occurring in those three counties. And I believe most of the hunters there walked out of that meeting with a better understanding of, of how we're, not only how we're managing, but the fact that we want to work with them to figure out what's going on. So I just wanted to bring that up to you. Uh, other changes with our turkey recommendations, there actually are no other changes, but I want to let you know what the seasons will be for 2014 spring turkey. Uh, if you look at the, the big game proclamation, it is standardized dates, but what it works out to be for 2014, uh, the spring season would be March 29th through May 11th, and the young sportsman's hunt is the weekend before the opening day, and that will occur March 22nd to the 23rd. And the limit for our spring turkey is one bearded turkey per day, not to exceed four per season. Now, that concludes our turkey recommendations. And if, Commissioner Cox, you wanted to address? Yeah, I've got, uh, Mr. Chairman, I've got an amendment that I talked about last month that I would make, that I would move to change the current regulation that reads a licensed turkey hunter who has filled his or her bag limit or does not possess a valid permit for quota hunt may accompany another turkey hunter. And here's where the change comes. Presently it says, except on WMAs where prohibited. And I move to, to uh, replace that phrase, except on Oak Ridge WMAs, and assist him, her, in calling, but may not have a gun or bow in his possession. Is Oak Ridge the only WMA? Or <coughs> I believe so. Good. There's, there's security problems with background checks, et cetera, on WMA, and the, and the, and the reason is just to, to allow uh, novice hunters, et cetera, to have some help if they want to go to WMA, and as it reads right now, I need to I need to <laughs> as it reads right now, the WMA manager, which they haven't necessarily done, but they have the option of not allowed to do that, and that's not the, we, when we did that, that was not what the commission so I want to clarify that. So I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Does that have to be, Cheryl, does that have to be a, a rule? Or is it, does not? No, okay, thank you. The 1305. Yeah. Yes. It's a 1305. 1305. Is there any more discussion about the amendment to Proclamation 13-05? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Amendment passes for Proclamation 13-05. Chairman T. Yes. Just real quick, and, and forgive this editorial, but I think it's important. Um, last week I was at the Ducks Unlimited National Convention, and there was a number of comments by folks from other states who said, you know, we all know that youth hunting is on the decline and that they're having to work hard to get the age limit down to get kids involved earlier. I hadn't paid attention to it, but I think it's a, it's a credit to the agency and past commissions in this state, but on the youth hunts, it's six to 16, I believe. And uh, I think that, spe that speaks well for our state. And I hadn't appreciated it until I heard the other stories that other states are going through where people have to, youth have to be significantly older to 
to have the chances our kids do. So I just, I, the commission and the agency's done well in that regard. That's all I wanted to offer. Cheryl. I just want to make uh, sure you understood that you were voting as a committee and not a full commission. And I'm sure it was an oversight, but you didn't get any comments from the audience on that, on the amendment. Okay. Does anybody have a comment on the amended proclamation? The amendment to the proclamation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of Proclamation 1305. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of passing Proclamation 13-05? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Proclamation 13-05, as amended, passes. All right, mo moving on. I'm going to take a little break simply because uh, Chairman McMillan asked me to throw this up there. Uh, we often, as an agency, get questions and comments about mountain lions in Tennessee. I will tell you that we have no documented mountain lions in Tennessee. However, there is a picture that was floating around recently on a, on a website that kind of garnered quite a bit of stir for the people that viewed it. And this picture was taken up on the Cumberland Plateau. And it was asked that TWA representatives comment on it, and I, I passed it to a few of our biologists for, for comment. And that was obviously taken with a trail camera, and obviously a lot of people um, are, are seeing a mountain lion in that picture. Well, if you blow it up, there's really good, uh, good looking instance of a mountain lion looking cat in that picture. Anyway, what the person later posted on that same website, uh, he posted another picture from the exact same trail camera, which I just overlaid it on here. And I'm gonna do some magic here just to show you what, what we're able to do. And I'm not doing magic to, to do anything squirrely here. But if, if you take that deer picture and overlay it with the original cat picture, and I, I'm doing this so you can see that the two pictures line up. If you, if you look to see the trees and everything, these pictures line up 100% perfectly. And if we move that over to include the, the cat, then go back on and look here, <laughs> that mountain line just shrank considerably. And so we believe it is just a typical house cat that was roaming the woods. So it, it, it could be. No, it's just a big deer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought that was, that was interesting. We, we would, and just to dispel any conspiracy theories, our biologists are probably, our biologists are probably the most eager to find uh, documented evidence of, of the cats moving in. We believe it'll occur over time, but until we have, uh, perfect confirmation of, of a picture or track or an actual body that um, that would really, really help because usually the pictures um, don't do it justice all the time. Okay, moving on. The, the next proclamation that we bring forward to the commission is Proclamation 13-06, which is our Wildlife Management Area Proclamation. If you look at the state of Tennessee, obviously we are blessed with lots of public land opportunities. We have over 130 wildlife management areas and state refuges. Um, these are all in proclamation. Uh, this includes almost 1.5 million acres of WMAs where the public can go and hunt and enjoy our wildlife resources. Um, the one thing I will tell you, we presented a red line version of the WMA proclamation a month ago at the April commission meeting. Uh, since then, we've been doing continuous edits, and occasionally we find things here or there where a date was off or, or, or something minor was tweaked. We, we obviously will let you know of any major changes, um, but if you look, the final proclamation that you have in your books should be up to date with all the edits. But if you find any discrepancy, it's simply because we found a clerical er error within the last uh, few weeks, and we just corrected that. If you look at the 2013 seasons for the WMA proclamation, um, a couple of things to keep in mind with the WMAs. Uh, most of them, almost 80%, are open statewide hunting and trapping opportunities. Um, we do have a lot of exceptions where we intensively manage for one species or another. Obviously, this 
uh, speaks tremendously well for the waterfowl in West Tennessee. We also have a number of WMAs that specifically manage for quality deer management opportunities. Uh, we have big game quota hunts and special youth hunts and dove hunts on some of these WMAs. Uh, but most of the changes that you find in the proclamation that's before you are standard date changes or a date shift uh, or they're uh, simple uh, clerical clarifications. Uh, any significant changes are going to be noted, and I'll go through the major changes that occurred for this year. Uh, first off, two changes that affect all of the, all of the WMAs is we insert a, a sentence at the beginning of that proclamation which closes the access to caves located on our WMAs. We have major concern over white nose syndrome, which is a disease that is killing bats in huge numbers. Uh, we just discovered it in Tennessee a few years ago, and the number of instances or the number of caves in which we're finding these is growing uh, every year. And that's a concern for us because, as you know, bats are an integral part of our ecosystem, and the amount of mosquitoes that they consume, we really, really, really want to have bats around. So we are going to close the, the cave access on all of our WMAs to prevent the unintentional spread of this white nose syndrome, which is devastating. Uh, to bat populations. Another thing we are recommending is to close our quail seasons on January 15th on our WMAs. We've had quite a bit of discussions within the last year or so regarding quail populations and because of our WMAs receiving an ex extreme amount of hunting pressure, if they're one of the only areas where a quail season is open, it's going to draw in uh, the public in great numbers and it could put the quail population at detriment, especially if we're if we're hunting really late in the season. So we'd like to close quail seasons on our WMAs on January 15th. Now, if you look region by region what some of the major changes are, region one, pretty simple. I believe there's only four or five. Um, I will let you read those and look at those. The couple that I'll, I'll highlight tend to be the more important ones. If you recall last year or last month at the commission meeting, you passed a new proclamation establishing Parker Branch WMA. This was land we already held, but we are now proclaiming it so we can uh, put hunting seasons on there. And that one, uh, we are adding big game and small game hunting opportunities. I do believe it, it is open to statewide seasons. Another thing, President's Island is one of our more popular hunts. We had a tremendous flood two years ago that wiped out 40% of the deer herd on that island. And so we're removing one of the antlerless hunts on that island until that population comes back up. In Region 2, again, we don't have too many recommendations. Um, Headwaters WMA is a new WMA that was proclaimed last year. Um, for the most part, it's increasing opportunities uh, where, wherever we see fit, just very minor changes to the WMAs in Region 2. In Region 3, there's a bit more recommendations. Uh, some of the important ones that I believe the Commission will be interested in is on Catoosa, we had a wild hog control season that ran for 10 days in January last year. Uh, it provided uh, some dead hogs. It allows dogs, and we had it was open to the public in, in a non-quota fashion, and we had a number of folks come out there to pursue hogs, and we were able to kill a, a, a fair number of hogs. What was the total? 36 hogs on that, on that hunt, not hunt, <laughs> in that control season. And um, what, what we heard from the public and from a, a few of the people that participated on that was they would really appreciate if it was broken up into two segments. So we are having two five-day segments as opposed to one 10-day segment for that wild hog control season. Uh, the first segment's in, in December, the second one is in January. Uh, for the most part, we are increasing days or opportunities. Um, we have some changes to Enter Enterprise South due to uh, a conflict with the name of the warrior hunts. But other than that, um, those are the changes of Region 3. There's also a few more that were added. If any of the Commission has any questions about what's up on the screen, by all means, please ask. If not, I will be moving on to Region 4. And in Region 4, um, there was some discussion. There, there's quite a few changes. All of them are fairly minor in nature. 
Uh, one of the areas in which the commission had some question was Lick Creek Bottoms and the waterfowl hunting opportunities. I believe we're all square away with that, but we don't recommend any, any alteration from what we proposed last month. And believe it or not, that includes all the WMA recommendations. I know there's a lot that are included in your packet. If you have any questions on any of them, by all means, please ask. We need to pause again just for a second, please.